Hello everyone, it's me Connor from Seafoam Gaming and Soul Float Aside. This is an unscripted memories that I planned, but what are you doing? The cat wasn't planning to be deceiver. Um, but yeah, this is an unscripted memories that I planned, but planned to make the other one I mentioned last time first. The one about the it, my times when I was a teenager that I didn't do stuff right, like mostly just ruinous people go over like you know bad things i did that i regret not nothing illegal just really shitty things that you shouldn't do i was gonna do a whole unscripted memories on that and i still will but i got back from my first set of trips in my vacation cabin i have to do every summer and on the week of e3 i went to my aunt's place in wisconsin to do some e3 stuff with my friend from illinois who visited us in the place at wisconsin so once I spent a night week at her house and he spent a few nights with us, we had a good time and the whole week in general has been wonderful. Why? So since I didn't want to release or film the unscripted memories in the middle of the treehouse in case they did some like Donkey Kong arcade archives because lastly I was like, oh, it's nothing special. Then boom, Donkey Kong on the last day. Well, no, e is over, everyone's gone. It's Saturday, which means patrons are probably going to have this not as early access, but Apologies for that. I'll make up for it somehow. But needless to say, cat aside, you know they can't see him yet. Um, here's what happened at E3 2019 and how I reacted to it along with some stuff I did that week. So E3 kicked off like last Saturday with EA doing their dumb press conference they do every year. And I'd never ever watched these. I've never been interested in one. And the only EA games I've ever, ever really enjoyed were the Harry Potter Zelda clones they published when I grew up with my mom. But then they got like down here after part 5, like the movies did until part 7. And part 7 was like a dude person shooter which wasn't even a Zelda clone anymore. So I'm glad I dodged those games. But EA, yeah they haven't been interested in, in, interesting to me. So I ignored it. I All I know is that for some stupid reason they make the FIFA on Switch that's coming out this year. Cause like two years before they didn't make it like the other versions but they made it like this weird portable version like for the DS and stuff but it wasn't a dumbed down console version it was just something different for the handheld market because EA or EA it worked and it sold a lot and it outsold the other versions in some places like Europe and Japan at times so I was for Sunday at least keep that going and give us a Madden game the football game you know football soccer I thought, well, even if they don't give us the big Star Wars or big games that don't run on Switch well, they'll give us a Madden for families. Because I know one of my aunts, my aunt and her girlfriend both flat out like Madden, and I bet if they had a Switch, they'd wonder why there was no Madden. Like so many other people I've seen in the stores. But no, no Madden. Still on PS4 and Xbox and PC only. No Switch. Not even a simple, dumbed down version. Not even some as bad as the Madden 3DS game, just. Nothing, because EA, they are American companies, and American AAA companies do not give a shit about Japanese companies. That's always the way it's been, basically. Activision, I'd say it's the same, but they're putting off their kids' stuff like Spy and Crash on there, but nothing else. I don't care about Activision much either. But uh, e EA was pretty uh, bad, to say the least. I think I may have called them E3. But yeah, EA, not good. So Microsoft on Sunday, this is when I was in the middle of being taken to Wisconsin, though it happened after I arrived. So all I was able to do was watch live tweets, and all I saw was some random PC stuff. Game Pass on PC, so I gave that a shot, and it's okay so far. I may not keep it, because I only have a PC and I prefer Steam. But yeah, Game Pass stuff, and that's basically it. And Fantasy Star Online 2. For those who don't know, Sega made this MMO series as a successor to Fantasy Star's RPG series. And I love the original RPG series. They are great games. And the Sega Ages port of 1 is really good and so is the PS2 compilation. But I've not liked anything past 4 because they aren't RPGs. They aren't real Fantasy Star games, at least main series 1. They called one Fantasy Star Zero but some weird action game and whatnot. So yeah, basically what they did is they made it an MMO game, but still kind of has a single player element to it. It's not for everyone. I'm just not interested in MMOs. They're all crud to me. The subscriptions are nonsense. The ones that are free to play are really rigged with microtransactions and stuff. 
it's not good, not fun. I hate those kind of games. And Fantasy Star Online didn't interest me. Fantasy Star Online 2 definitely didn't interest me. So when Sega announced way back in 2012 that, oh, hey, we're bringing it west, I was like, okay, I could care less if this comes out. And somehow it didn't come out at all. They just didn't feel like doing it. Probably because they realized it wasn't a proper Fantasy Star and it wasn't worth doing. So with Brazilians and all their Facebook spammers that asked for Dreamcast 2 and Shenmue 3 at one point. Now that's a Dream 2. But all those spammers on their Facebook and Twitter always asked about PSO 2 coming to the West. Even though it was always confirmed. And they wouldn't say much outside of it being delayed. And they'd just be working on it behind the scenes. And no one really bought it. And they all got mad over an MMO. But they did make it in English. In Southeast Asia. Where the IP ban you you go from outside of Japan. And there's less stuff to do than in Japan. So even if it came over here, it would basically be an awful, awful game. At least so I thought. Turns out Microsoft didn't think so because they somehow helped Sega get it out the door for Xbox One and PC next year. And it's free to play. Which it wasn't in Japan. I may give it a shot. It's free to play and it's mostly just cosmetics and stuff. Just may see how the gameplay and story works. And if it isn't for me, I can drop it. I don't have to waste my money on a crappy subscription. So that's good. And in terms of other versions, they confirmed that, yeah, they're coming down on line 2. So yeah, Switch and PS4, they all get the game too. But yeah, Fantasy Star Online 2, the mythical game that vanished into the ether like 70 years, 60 years ago. It's here. Finally here for the people who care, and that's not me. But I know a lot of people do care, so I'm happy that they do get their game, and I'm gonna give it a shot, because why not, on PC. So yeah, Microsoft was okay, nothing really interesting outside Game Pass and Fantasy Star 2 for PC. But outside that, yeah, it was okay. Then the next day on Monday, this is when the cool stuff happens. My friend John from Illinois came over to visit me, and we watched E3 together. But first we went around town to show them around the sites, eat some lunch, get some games, because it was like Crystal Crisis I wanted to buy at Best Buy. And then I suggested we go to Milwaukee and look at some old game store because why not? There may be somewhere there. I joked to him that I've been looking for a Turbo Graphics 16 for five years now. Five, six, five years. Yeah, since 2014. And I've won one super badly, but they've always been 120 the higher. Just for the system, not even the cables or controller or game. But yeah, I was like, okay, that'll not happen. I've seen Neo Geo Pockets before, but not a uh, full-blown Turbo Graphics. Well, in this store called Battle Box Games, I went there, and when we looked around, I saw, to my shock, the Turbo Graphics 16. I have one now. It was a hundred for the whole set. This, the cables, the power plug, and heat courage. All of it for 100 even. Well, tax and... 10 extra. Well, it was 126 because I got a Game Gear game with it. But yeah, I'm amazed that my luck was just so good. And I called my friend a good luck charm because I've been looking for this dawning in person for five years. Everyone's told me they've never seen one ever. Then I go to this random Milwaukee store and they have two TurboGrafx 16s one in the back, which is the one I have, and one for display. And they also have a Neo Geo Pocket Color gaming watch system that I've also been looking for for a decade. And other stuff. It was like, my friend called it the El Duardo or Retro Games. I just called it Heaven because I died. I literally died and went to Heaven and found all the stuff I've ever been looking for. But I only could pick one, so I got my Tello Graphics. I don't have an AV booster yet, but Hyperkin made one. And besides Hyperkin's AV stuff, I think I'm gonna just, yeah. Bring the Turbo Graphics, play it, get some games off and on, like Power Golf, those are cheap. And get a PC Engine Converter when I can, because all the PC Engine stuff is cheap. There's lots of them for $10 on eBay. But yeah, my Holy Grail, I got it, and it's so good. I'm so happy. So yeah, that's one thing good to come out of our trip before E3 started. And then we got home just in time to see the Limited One Games E3, which is what I was into, but John didn't know anything about them. So he watched to see how it would go. We both liked it. John was surprised that some games they announced were Switch physical, but most of them were already released. But he did get into wanting to buy Blast Master Zero and the Mist game at the point on Switch. He's really into Mist, and I was surprised because, well, I never been into Mist before, and I had no interest after seeing how bad the 3DS version was. I almost bought that. I feel like I was spared. 
But I hear the game is good on not the 3DS, and this is some other game. So I may give that a shot, but I'm definitely getting Freedom Planet. Uh, Metal Slug 3, because it's apparently a super good part of Vita game. I think I'll get Atari, possibly. I'm definitely getting um, Night in the Woods, and I'm getting something else they announced there. It was this July game, or quarter 3 game. I don't know which. I think it was Brazing Chrome. That was a quarter 4 game, though. But yeah, there's lots of limited 1 stuff I am getting. I always get stuff from them to unbox for you guys, and for fun. Though I have to go to another subject about my PS4, that may make that harder. But uh, they did do something at the E3 that made me raise a big eyebrow. And a lot of people on the internet forum are part of, you know, I think some, like, one half is crazy. Um... They partnered with THQ Nordic to bring out Red Faction, which is a PS2 game that's actually super duper good. I have it on my PS4 from a Humble Bundle from years ago. But here's the thing if you're out of the loop. THQ Nordic is a bad company. Literally terrible. Not because they did like some microtransaction nonsense, though might as well have because of how bad it hurts me personally. They did an AMA, and everyone does AMAs. I know indie devs who've done AMAs. I've even asked some indie devs to do interviews with me one-on-one. -on -one. But they did one on a site I cannot name because it's off Google rankings, and it's so abhorrent and has so much bad content, i never ever going to go on there and look for myself. I know it from people who reported on that site. Uh, yeah, they did an AMA there. Not like another site with a similar name that's kind of bad, but also people do memes there. Uh, no, it was the hellhole, like, deep, dark web hellhole. They did an AMA there, seriously, and they talked about bad, illegal stuff, and made jokes about stuff, and... Why? That's a whole nother story, but needless to say, some bearded, racist YouTubers thought, Oh, ho, ho, people be mad now, they're, they're sensitive, they're edgy, they're not real journalists because, Oh, they're upset at this game company catering to people like the ones that my mom's boyfriend were. So yeah, that hurt me personally that uh, THQ Nordic did that, and so ever since then I've not wanted anything to do with those games. I literally had to get myself off the PR list because I wanted nothing to do with those shit. And I didn't want anyone else I knew to do stuff with them too. Of course, Best Buy, Nintendo, and all the other stores will carry their games, and yeah, that's expected. Even if they're the worst company ever, as long as they aren't, you know, breaking the law and have a building, they're still going to get their games published. So I think the people who do think Nintendo and all the other stores should delist their games, no, but they should be held accountable on the guys at the hub head, because it was not just some internet PR company, no, it was the, the CEOs of that awful, awful Nordic. But yeah, that whole shit show side that was months ago, Limited One Games partnered with them to publish Red Faction, which is a good game, and I would recommend buying it if um, Nordic wasn't behind it. And yeah, I cannot in good conscience back that decision. And I think it was kind of awful they did that. But I'm not going to berate them because I've been in the Discord for months. And when that whole thing happened on that day, everyone, the moderators, the site owners, everyone was upset and pissed off at the whole of the actions they did. So it's not like they're oblivious to it. And since their Nickelodeon deal was over a year ago and they just are now announcing the first game from it, I think this was in the works for a while and they can't back out of it because they'd just be lighting money on fire. So I'm not going to say they should cancel the game, just don't do anything more from them. Or at the very least, tell them to knock that shit off. So yeah, that was a sour note, but not the worst of the conference. I do know a lot of people who were very upset and some wanted to never buy anything from this company again. But as I said before, like Best Buy stocks all their games and all their other companies. Stop doing that. And... So yeah, the THQ Nordic situation uh, is still going on. I don't recommend supporting them. I don't want to support them. And if you want to know more details, uh, just look up any the uh, long, in-depth explanations of how this came to be. Because most people are confused as I am. And it's pretty uh, bad. And yeah. But Limited 1 is not bad. And if you're like me and think that THQ Nordic are really stupid and you should never support them... Well, don't buy the game, like I am. I don't buy every game from LG anyway. And buy games from indie developers who need it most and could use a bit of help to support their games. Buy from devs who aren't shit, in other words. That aside, Limited One Games was a good conference. I'd rate a B-. Later that night, we had Square Enix's conference, which I watched last year and was bored to death because it was 30 minutes of repeats from last the night before at Microsoft's. 
But this time, they actually had lots of new stuff. They did it in a painting style, where they like showed different paintings one by one. And they all announced stuff, and me and John watched it. They did a Final Fantasy VII remake show off. I didn't care for it that much, because it's like all mid up go off. Which is the only part of the game I've beaten, so I'm literally buying a game I've already beaten, but bigger and bloated. But it's good that it's finally partly coming out at least. And then they announced some other stuff like Romancing Saga 3 and Scarlet Grace. That made me ultra happy. Like, Romancing Saga 3 has an amazing soundtrack and an amazing story. And I hear so much good things about it. The Axe River introduced me to it, and I'm so glad it's coming west for the Switch. I'm going to buy it day one. Scarlet Grace, uh, it's my mix on it. It looks kind of rough. But I'm going to go for Romancing Saga 3. I have Romancing Saga 2, but the way the party system switch works is kind of stupid and I have lost interest in that game. I hear 3 and 1 are much better. But besides those two games, there was also some other stuff they announced. And overall, just a lot of stuff I don't care about. Kingdom Hearts DLC, which I care about, but I have been free, so I want to beat that so I don't get spoiled on it. So I think that's kind of important. My friend hates Kingdom Hearts, so he didn't like that part of the conference. And they announced some other things as well, like Octopath on PC. I don't have it on Switch. I don't think I'll get it for PC, but good for them, I guess. Last Remnant for Switch for the show, I was like, oh my god, isn't that a PS3 game that never came out? And it came out on Xbox and PC, apparently. But no, it's a remastered one from PS4, and it's on Switch. But I hear the game's not good, so I didn't buy it. He gave me a shot card to spend on something for the conference, so I was like, okay, I'll do that. So that was out of the way, and that was a good time. And then we came to Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, the port of Final Fantasy VIII that people thought wouldn't happen because they lost the source code. I may have bet with my friend John that if they did that, I'd do something really stupid on the internet with him. Like one of these nights, like, I don't know, some dumb breaks in role play where, like, my fox and me ass his head off and, like, something stupid, meany, meany stuff, meany shit. I dared him that I'd do all sorts of meany nonsense, meme nonsense, if... It was announced because I had no anticipacity. I had no expectations for that happening, but it happened. I don't know why, but it happened. So yeah, I have to make some memes, and I did make one meme about something that happened the next day, which wasn't so good. But we'll get into that. And then they, uh, I forgot what was the last. Oh yeah, Avengers could care less about that. No Moonlight. No, I'm not a Marvel guy. I only know a few characters. Watching Endgame and Infinity Wars, my only Marvel movies, is one weird experience. That's all I'll say on the properties. But that Square Enix's role is okay, and I give him a B. And then on Tuesday, the one he came over for in the first place, Nintendo, and it was a good one. Like, oh my god, the last time I had a friend over to watch E3 with me, it was the worst E3 ever, E3 2015. That was bad. They didn't even show off Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon in no transformation themed conference. It was bad, and all the games were bad, and all the announcements were bad, and everything looked bad. Everything was bad. I can't stop saying that word to describe that conference. Why did I watch that if it was if I'd invite someone from 400 miles away to come, well, 200 in John's case to come watch it with me? I think they'd be pissed at me. But no, this one was much better. Almost everything was good. They started off with the announcement of Dragon Quest Hero for Smash Bros, and I was like, Oh my god, thank you! Finally, some character of Nintendo relevance, not some nobody like Joker. I skipped the DLC pass because Joker, I was like, Okay, Persona 5 on Switch is coming, then, right? Well, no, it's not coming. They are doing a cool spinoff I'm gonna get, but, yeah, no Persona 5. And I was like, yeah, I'm not buying this. I want Nintendo characters in Smash. Like, Nintendo ones. And then there was this rumor a week before that Banjo Kazooie would be in the game. I was like, why them? They are totally irrelevant. They have no internal history outside of some stuff in America. And like, they look ugly. Didn't you see them in nuts and bolts? So I was like, no, that's not happening. If that happens, I'm going to be upset. I like it for be like the Chrono, the Dragon Quest hero like was rumored. Or some from Nintendo, like anyone from Nintendo. So Dragon Quest hero was kind of nice. It was from 11, 8, 3, and no, not 3. Four and yeah, three and four, and I was, so I was like, cool, that happened, nice, good announcement. Now it's up. They did a bunch of stuff in IP Hall. They released them all, but some highlights for me were the Zelda Link's Awakening Expedition and House Coming Out in September, which is really nice. It's super soon. I like that. 
looks like a good remake. I didn't like the original that much. And hey, this one looks a lot better. A lot, a lot pretty. I'll be more and more ready to do the side quests. And there's amiibo support and whatnot. And there's a dungeon builder. There's lots of cool stuff in that one. There's Astral Chain, which looks super awesome. And not as much Sin and Punishment as I thought it would be from the other direct. But it looks good. I'm going to buy that. And then there's Fire Emblem Free Houses, which looks super promising after the rough showing from last year. And I'm going to buy that too, but I also want to be Echoes before I get it because, well, that's a better game, I think. At least it looks better because Echoes is super underweight and I got stuck. And I'm ashamed I got stuck. And I'm ashamed my cat's making noise. I don't want to play, no! Anyhow, the cat's joining up E3 conference discussion. And yeah, Fire Emblem looks good. Pokemon looked okay. The Sword Shield director is good. And I love Coronite so much. But uh, more on that later. And then the two bombshell announcements that made me jump out of my seat and go nuts. Not my cat. First was Trials of Mana or Psychic Free. I had a Japanese compilation. I made gameplay videos on it years ago and I was like almost 100% answering everyone in the comments who even suggested the idea that this will never happen in English because no one's going to take their time to translate a crusty old Super Nintendo game that no one would care about. And yeah, just like Mother 3, no one's going to retranslate an old game unless there's major profits to come. And I guess there was major profits to come because Square Enix announced the full 3D remake that looks amazing! And I was like, oh my god, it's in 3D! It looks awesome and epic! And then they announced the compilation was coming out west with Psych and Free Translated. I was like, oh my god, this is like miracle. Announcement after announcement of epicness. And I was like, oh my god, this is epic. Well, the Psych and Collection I happy translate and update. Answer is no, I have to buy it again. So I'm not gonna do that right away. But hey, Psych and fans, I like it. I'm glad that you guys are getting the compilation done right. Then there was Contra, which people are actually not happy about, and it got a lot of dislikes, but I don't care, because Contra World Corpse looks epic. It Visually, it's not that good, but no, honestly, it looks better than the American PS1 games, and better than the two PS2 games. It's in the middle. It's not like a Super C like sequel that I wanted, it's some related Contra 3, which is my least favorite Contra game. But it looks fun. It looks like the top-down stages from both Super C and Contra 3. Just a full game, twin stick style, with jumping and whatnot. And it looks really fun. People who play that E3 say it's a lot of fun. And I pre-ordered it and buying it day one. Eagerly anticipating and glad that Konami's not sitting on that series. Apparently, I think it's the same one they announced back at E3 2011 and just sat on for years. While they milked Metal Gear to death. And then Metal Gear died. And then they milked Pez to death. I hope they kill off Pez too. But yeah, Contra's back and I'm happy. And there was a Contra collection that came out that day, so I bought it, of course. And that's basically it for the Intel conference. I was like, well, the rumors about Banjo being true. I was like, oh my god, he actually did do it. I was like, okay, show me him. He's gonna look ugly and American as heck. No! He looks pretty and gorgeous, and Kazooie is cute and I expected. Everything is amazing in that trailer. He's just so expressive, looks better than any model he's ever had. He looks way better than that awful, awful nuts and bolts design that was 100% certain they lose, which is why I didn't want him to begin with. But no, he looks good and I want to play as him too. I'm surprised. Now as long as he opened Crash Bandicoot, we are good. And my cat's playing. So I guess the next, like, last bit will be with my cat. Hi, human. I want to say hi to everyone for being naughty in my video. Um, but yeah, this is my cat. And, um, that's basically it for E3, except, um, in the Treehouse Live, which I didn't watch much of. We watched, me and John were, like, so excited about all the announcements, we just watched the ones afterwards, and we saw Pokemon Sword and Shield and we were like, cool, we get to see new stuff, and they were like, oh my god, new wireless features, and I was like, wait, that's epic, it's way better than Festival Plaza, this game looks way better than Gen 6 and 7 combined, it's a return to form, hooray! And then Masuda opens his mouth again, which always leads to a disaster, because every single time he's opened his mouth, he's revealed something that was really stupid, the Battle Frontier being cut from OAS, Gen 7's weird pacing and story. Let's go pick Q's Eevee's existence and dumbing down, only for it not to be dumbed down because I hear it's actually harder because they stats found like in Fire Leaf Green. And my Fire Leaf Green, I got my ass kicked, so I'm actually wanting to check that out now. But no, he flat out said you cannot transfer any non Galar Dex Pokemon 
to the new games. They'll go to home, but they won't go to the new games because they want to focus on the animations. Obviously, people are calling that BS because they're using the same boring and ugly models from Gen 6. And I don't care about the models much, but hey, I got old, they'll just reuse them, not do much. But hey, the game will be good, so that's all that matters. But there must be some new feature, like supposedly a rumor about a camp feature that they are putting a bunch of work on. But why? Why do you cut out so many Pokemon just for the heck of it? It seems stupid, and it seems more like a side effect of Nintendo annualizing the games than Game Freak wanting to do something new. I understand stuff like Black and White 1, where you can do it later, but this won't even be in the coding. That's just sickening and sad. So, uh, yeah, my hype for that game is gone. Just gone. I'm gonna see they will reverse the decision, or put in a big Battle Frontier post game to make up for it. But right now, I'm in the boot of bring back national decks, and yeah. Though some people have been assholes about it, and have been harassing Game Freak devs. And me and this cat want to say, don't do that, and you're kind of a uh, jerks. Especially if you're the kind that think, oh, now that everyone hates the game, I can nitpick because now I see people who are nitpicking grass textures and the trees and minor stuff no one would give a shit about because have you seen how bad the stuff in Sun and Moon and XY can get? Like the textures? No one would complain about those outside the frame rate because that impact the gameplay. There are a lot more worse things to worry about. And so, uh, yeah. Sword Shield is getting roasted. Apparently it's the most disliked trailer of E3, the Treehouse video, which is hilarious when you consider how bad Fallout 76 and all the Bethesda stuff was. And I didn't even mention that because of how little I care for anything about that company. Um, but I'm going to make an opinion article on that on my website when I'm more calm, collected, and have all the facts down. Because everyone's like ripping themselves apart over this. It's a war zone. I don't like how the fan base is acting. I hope Game Freak reverses the decision, but I don't want them to delay the game from November. Or well, I want them to, but I know that if they do that, like if they feel they are forced to, the whole anime and TCG will be thrown out of sync, and just everything will be broken. But I also don't want them to just put in the next year's game and make it like annual DLC. I want them to embrace downloadable updates for good content. So yeah, that was Nintendo's conference, and it was amazing! The best E3 pretty much I've ever seen from them. And I'm excited for every game that's coming out except Sword and Shield because uh, Masuda is stupid. That's all I can say. But he's not worth sending uh, threats to. Like, some people are saying racial slurs and bad stuff to him. And I'm like, why? This is the same shit you pulled with Pokemon Bank when you all went nuts and made him scared off Twitter. Don't go that far. Be more civil. But, yeah. Pokemon stuff aside, there was no announcement that I kid you not just made me go, am I a god? Because Konami had special E3 announcements, all right, and everyone thought, okay, it'll be the Contra game that was put on a German website, and then it's Contra World Corps. And I was like, okay, it's gonna be the crappy Pez games that they'll milk over and over again, because Metal Gear's gone, and they can't milk that anymore. Um, or it'll be a new mobile game, because contrary to popular belief, the Pachinko stuff is not really that popular over here, and it's a completely separate part of Konami that does that, so digital entertainment, no, they're milking Pez. Get after them for Pez all you want. But Pachinko is a Japan's thing. It's their, their problem to deal with, is basically what I'm saying. Well, they announced them I barely dreamed about and just thought as a possibility, but it would never happen because they barely care about Hudson. At least I thought so. PC Engine Mini. They're making the Mini Turbo Graphics. I wanted this forever! Oh my freaking god, I'm so happy! I'm just... I... I'm... Really happy, like, the Sega Genesis Mini looks awesome, I, I'm, I'm gonna get one of those, but Turbo Graphics Mini, that won't happen. Well, no, it is gonna happen. They announced that E3 of all places, with six games, just some stuff like Dracula X or Japan, which is a good get. And for us in Japan, East 1 2, yes! The best Turbo Graphics game that got me to the system. Now everyone gets to play that, and no one has an excuse for not buying that system. I swear to God, even my close best friends who are like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fans, I'm gonna tell you to buy that darning so they can play the best Mystery Dungeon that isn't a Mystery Dungeon or a roguelike. Ah, That's just amazing. And they announced more games soon, the Japanese like Twitter for Konami had like a thing where they asked what games you wanted. I already asked for stuff like Vadis 1 through 4, East 3, and Star Parodia. Um, but yeah, there's lots of good PC Engine Turbo Graphics stuff that needs to be honest thing. I want to have 50 games, 30, 50 games, 
as long as the emulation is from D4 or M2, it'll be good. It'll be golden. It'll be golden. Just don't mess it up. Don't give it to At Games. Don't do anything bad. You haven't done anything bad with the PC Engine emulation, so keep it up, please. Whew. But yeah, the fact that it happened two days after I bought my Real Turbo graphics because I wanted one and wanted to play games that wouldn't be on Virtual Console, well, shoot, now I have it. So, uh, that's a thing. But hey, I'm gonna buy both. Turbo Graphics and Turbo Graphics Mini, so yay! Best announcement of E3 in my book was the Mini for Turbo Graphics, cause it was like my pipe dream. Of course, angsty Metal Gear fans are kind of upset that it's not Metal Gear whatever, because Metal Gear is Konami's main cash cow before that whole controversy happened. But I don't care about that franchise outside of 2D games, and they haven't made one of those since 2001. I wouldn't mind a compilation though, the PS3 one was really good, if they put, if they put out new systems, I think I'd be content. But yeah, that Konami announcement, man, like, some people underestimate how big a PC engine was in Japan, and how many good games it had! Like, BUY ONE! That's all I can say, and this is at games, and DON'T BUY ONE! I'll whip them in half if they do something like that. Whew. <sighs> But yeah, that's E3. E3 week went by, and you know, my friend left by the time the PC Engine was announced. We had a good time there. We had lots of fun, played lots of games. I spent some time with my aunt and the cats, had a lot of fun. And then I got home a while ago, and now on Saturday, filming this, I have another E3 related surprise. The Nintendo Switch grab bag from the Best Buy demo event, which I haven't made in ages. I think the last one I made was the Mario Maker one in 2015. But I was so upset by Nintendo's crappy conference, I didn't even bother. I like played Triforce Heroes for like five minutes and gave up because it was boring. And I played Mario Maker and didn't like it because it was like the levels were just bad. Like the ones they made for the demo were bad. So I was just depressed at that. But no, this one I was in a much better mood and I had a much better time. The game was Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3, which as I mentioned I don't care much about because Marvel was I don't care about anything but Moonlight and maybe Ghost Rider. And speaking of which, they announced Ghost Rider and the Knights guys. And Moon Knight's part of them, so I hope he's in the game. Because literally everything I want will be in a Marvel game for the first time like ever since Pinball. So yeah, that's good. And I played the game with some kid who was there because like it was full of play and anyone wanted to play. It's actually pretty fun. It's like Hyrule Warriors, but like top down. I guess it makes sense because it's a Team Ninja game. But I had some fun with it. Maybe it'll not be some I'll buy day one, but if they announce Moon Knight for DLC, I will buy the game. Give it a shot. As long as I have some backlogs I've cleared beforehand. Because I have a big backlog. But yeah, let's look at what I got. Um, I got um, Luigi sunglasses that they gave away. Pretty nifty. I got this flyer for the early access and um, the eShop sales. And speaking of which, I spent the remaining my eShop money on... I think Wargroove, that was the game. I sent some on Wargroove for the Switch, because that was a fun game I saw, and it was on sale. Um, but yeah, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance demo event, so that's a flyer. They also gave away a sketchbook, which looks really nifty. This is it. Pretty nice. Um, what else is in my grab bag of cool stuff? Um, and the Marvel Ultimate Alliance Keychain, which I think is exclusive to this event and E3. I don't care much for Marvel, but hey, it's a neat E3 promo gift. And that means Awakening Triad, like, so much is expensive. So this is the closest I'll get to E3 swag. I hate that word, but it's, it's what they use, isn't it? And then a bunch of Oasis and a Lanyard, which is, like, all my hand. And a pen, which is actually pretty cool. I may replace my old... Um, blue pen for my school bag with this Switch pen because it looks much fancier. But yeah, that was E3 2019 in a nutshell. The whole week, what I was looking forward to, what I'm excited for, the good stuff, some of the bad stuff, and a bunch of the cool things that happened. Uh, sorry for my cat interrupting a video, but hey, on Squid Memories is like that. And I'm just gonna simply say. Well, take care. Next time on Unscripted Memories, I will do the episode about the times I was a jerk as a teenager. Basically, go back to my past, look at what I did that was stupid, and talk about how I improved in the past years. You know, just to show how good of a person I am now. And Eternal Memories-wise, we have the episode for Game Boy Player still in the works. It's summer break and all that. I have a week 
left I can do a Game Boy Play episode. And then I have some episodes I have planned. I have one on Luigi's Mansion Arcade Machine I finally found. I have one on some old NES game. And in the season finale for Castlevania The Adventure, the Game Boy one. So there's that that's coming soon. And I even filmed some B-roll for Pokemon Super Z Dungeons Eternal Memories. That's coming off like way far away from now. But it's gonna get done. You just gotta play Explosive Sky. But now yeah, that'll take care of this unscripted memories and bye.